Good evening, Revelation Church. Good evening, Revelation Nation. Come on and stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet and give God the highest praise because he is working for your good tonight. He is working for your good tonight. Somebody give him a praise. He's working for you. God is working for you. He is the finished work. So whatever you came for today, if it is healing, if it's a promotion, if it's freedom, whatever you came for, God has already answered it right now. He's answered it right now. So I want us to be prophetic and already give him the praise because it is done. Because he is working. He is working for your good. It doesn't matter what people say, he is working for your good. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's working. Turn to your other neighbor and say, it's working. Even the people online, turn to somebody or type and say, it's working. God's working. He's working. He's working. And if you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. We're going to get a little radical. Put your hands together. Let's go.
I said, do you believe that God is working for your good this evening? Come on, if you believe he's fighting your battles, let me hear you say, yeah! Okay, let me see you guys put your hands together. Oh, wait. 
know that this is our month of dominion right I said you know that this is our month of dominion right so that means sometimes we got to say goodbye to some things we got to say goodbye to some fear we got to say goodbye to some depression to some anxiety to some pain to some hurts come on are you guys ready to say goodbye are you ready to say goodbye Come on and pick up the things of the Lord. Hello, be 
peace, hello joy, hello love. We'll sing that out. Hello strength, hello hope, it's a new horizon. Hello peace, hello joy, hello love. Hello strength, hello hope, it's a new
say heartbreak's not my home. Come on, death is not the end. One more time, oh. say fear. Sickness is not my story. And heartbreak's not my home. Say, death is not the end. Death is not the end. Come on, death is not the end. Death is not the end. Come on, the end. Death is not the end. Death is not the end. Will you believe that prophesy? Death is not the end. New life. Death is not the end. New life. Death is not the end. New life. Death is not the end. 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 Will prophesy that over your situation?
Revelation Church, you look beautiful and you sound beautiful. Are you excited to be here tonight? Anyone here tonight for the first time? Amen. We welcome you. I want you to do something different. Find a neighbor. Find the prettiest neighbor, the funniest neighbor, whatever you have, and tell them, the Lord will never leave you and he will never forsake you. One more time, the Lord will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Okay, I need you guys to help me sing this one. Let's worship. Hallelujah. No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been born again. You know it. My heart is free. The hope of sounds so good. Ready, sing it up. I won't forget the moment I heard you call my name out of the grip of darkness into the light of grace just like Lazarus. He was dead religion now there is living faith all of my hope and freedom I found in Jesus name and just like Lazarus you know it now sing it out
My Father and my God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for who you are. I thank you that your eye sees all things, O Lord. Your word says it, that you know all things, that which is in the dark, that which is in the open, is all the same to you. Father, we pray for grace and mercy today. Cleanse us, forgive us, purify us. Purify me that I'm useful in your hands, O Lord. Use us, Father, to be a blessing unto your people. Father, I pray that everyone that is watching from home, whatever burden they are struggling with, whatever difficult time they are having, Father, we look to you because you are our help. Father, rescue us today. Save us again today. Your word says that many are the tribulations and the trials of the righteous, but you save them from it all. Father, may we find salvation in your presence today. We thank you that we are purified, we are sanctified, and change is coming to us even now. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See what the Bible says. The Lord is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. The fact that you stepped in Revelation Church at this hour. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fact that you have turned on your YouTube to watch Revelation Church yes. at this time. Yes. You stopped everything to hear God to. Amen. There is a reward already on your head. Yes. Hallelujah. There is a blessing that has already descended upon you. I receive it. By virtue of being available. Yes. So now ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this beautiful question. Who is more interested in blessing who? God just wants you to seek him. He's already rewarding you. You didn't even pray. Just because you are present, he begins by, okay, uh, before I hear your request, here's 10 billion to take care of. Uh -uh. I haven't even prayed for what I... That is the way God deals with us. God wants to give us something that when you are with him, you even forget what you came to do. Because you are so caught up with them. Amen, amen. The blessing has already settled things that you're like, huh? Amen. Ah. That is why the word of God says this. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lay down. Notice before you even ask, he's already shepherding you. He will feed you. Yeah. He will make you to lay down. Yes. He will do this. Yes. He will do... By the time you're thinking of what you even wanted, you forget. Come on. That is what is called wiping away your tears. Yeah. That the memory of pain, of suffering, the only thing that will be ringing in you is, ah, the blessing of God yes. is real. Yeah. Shake your neighbor. Say, neighbor! Neighbor! The blessing of God, the blessing of God is real. Is real. Say neighbor. Neighbor. The blessing of God, the blessing of God is already upon you. Is already upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. Say, Father, I receive the reward of being of, in your presence. Father, I receive the reward of being in your presence. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I receive the reward of being present in your presence. I receive the reward of being present in your presence. Lift your voice and begin to receive what God already has for you. I receive the reward. Tell him, thank you for the incredible. Thank you. Thank you for the supernatural. Thank you for the supernatural. Thank you for the incredible, the impossible. Thank you. Redosta Akubi Abaka. Thank you, God. Thank you for the incredible God. Thank you for the impossible God. Thank you for the supernatural. Thank you for the impossible God. Thank you for the supernatural. Thank you for the supernatural. Thank you for the impossible God. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice to the Lord. Lift your voice to Jesus. Tell him thank you for mercy. Thank you 
for mercy. Tell him thank you for grace. Thank you for grace, God. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy and grace. I receive the reward of the day. I receive your reward, God. Thank you for mercy, God. Thank you, Thank for, you your for your grace, grace God. Thank you. Thank you for the reward, God. Thank you for your Oh yes, Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Tell him thank you for the impossible. Thank you for the Thank you for the incredible. Thank you for the incredible Lord. Thank you for the Iliama Soto Lobo. May my cup run over. May my cup run over. May my cup run over. Oh, yes, Lord. Ligia Makusta Akrone Mese. Promote the Liga Ako. Prededusta Akrumia Telemekese. Remende Kuria Masatala Bashata. Lift your voice. Lima Soto Lobo. Remendele Becusia Macata. Radala Basuka Mele Messia. When you see God attending to people, your duty is to trust. Amen. 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 Hear me by the Spirit of God. Your only duty is to trust. To say, Lord, I know you're not passing me by. If you did that for them, what you do for me will be greater, will be better. I receive. Amen. Because God only takes you from glory to glory. He won't do the same thing. He will do a better thing. Don't be fooled by this youth. This young chocolate African man. Don't let my age fool you. The spirit dwelling within is much older than what you think. Amen. Prophets possess an ancient spirit. I'm not speaking to you just to speak to you. I don't preach for entertainment. I don't preach to please anybody. I do what I do because God has told me to do. This is why religious people don't like me. And if you don't like me, I also don't like you. It's really that simple. It is simple. We are not here to force anybody. We are here to serve God. The biggest mistake pastors make is you want to preach for pastors. I wasn't called to minister to pastors. I care less what a pastor thinks. Amen. I care less what a bishop thinks. I came to save souls. Amen. Amen. If it doesn't concern souls, it doesn't make sense. Amen. And if it doesn't make sense, Jesus is not in it. I'm not here to get approval of men of God. As long as somebody lives where I am, saying Jesus is Lord, my life has changed. I know the way, I know the truth. That's what matters to me. So if you don't like me, I don't like you too. It's really that simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you with the love of Christ, but to like you too, no, I don't need that. I can love you from a distance. Like wants proximity. Because like implies we can be together. No, no, no. You can be over there. Amen. You know, I used to, you know, one of the things, I'll tell you something about the prophetic. And I will teach you a message called the mountain of God. 
I won't teach it today, but I will speak to you. Many men of God and believers have no power because they don't know how to draw power from God. Prayer doesn't produce power. Because prayer is not about what you will do. Prayer is putting a petition to God so that he may do something. The dimension of power whereby you become like Peter. You look at a man and you say, silver and gold I don't have but what I have. He didn't pray, he gave what he has. Power is when you can produce something out of you. Amen. To give somebody. Jesus had a habit of being on the mountain. Whenever he came from the mountain, he did something supernatural. Whenever he went into the wilderness, he came back in the power of the spirit. The issue is, men of God don't know how to be secluded. They don't know how to remove themselves. I've always been a removed person. My life is very simple. My family, my few spiritual sons and daughters, gym, church, studio. That's it. I have nothing else going on. That's what has kept what I have. I know how to go and draw from God. Amen. And when I come back, I do supernatural things. Amen. Why? Because I have to carry something. The thousands that are coming to London, they are not coming for me to ask petition. They are coming to receive answers from God. What God has given the prophet, the prophet will open himself and give me Amen. what I came for. Amen. They are coming for the dimension of silver and gold I don't have, but what I have. They are not coming to pray. If they are coming for prayer, they can do it at home. Jesus healed many, delivered many. They were not coming for him to pray. They were coming to receive something. That is what a minister does. A minister serves people. A priest can pray for you. I can pray for you at home. We don't need to be in the same place. After all, it's God that is going to answer. But if God is going to take off something in me to give to you, I have to be present. Because this is no longer we are asking, we need faith. There are people who tonight... This mama didn't come because she had faith for me to pray for her. It is what is inside of me I can give her. That gave her a solution. She wasn't required, do you believe? Do you trust? There was nothing like that in fall. I am coming with the answer to her. She came for healing, but she didn't tell me that. I don't know her. I've never met. Mama, do I know you? Put the microphone on her. Where are they? Ah, quickly. This is, this is my first time. This I, is your first time. I watch you on YouTube and I decided to come from Chicago. You came from Chicago? Yes. Amen. Amen. Do you think our mother came from Chicago to pray? She was already praying. She came to receive. Amen. She didn't come to pray. She came to receive. I've been praying. I know where my answer is. I am going to receive what God has for me. That's why she, not to pray. She's already praying. I can't pray better than she's already praying. She knows her case better. She didn't come because of prayer. She came because God has given this man answers. I can receive something from him. Amen. This is why you need to check who you're following. Some people that are preaching should be church members, not pastors. Amen. If you can't give anyone anything, what are you doing? You don't need a man of God to open the Bible to you and read it. You can read it yourself. Unless you're empowering me, bringing me to a higher understanding of God, something I did not have, then you have no business preaching to me what is already written. Amen. I can do that myself. The, servant of, the servants of God are supposed to perfect the church and to the coming of Christ. So a minister is there to perfect is not there to read to you the scriptures. You can do that yourself. God has already given us grace. There are Bibles everywhere. On your phone, on anything you need. Any version is available. So you're not coming to church for the Bible. You're coming to church for revelation. Amen. So that when you go home, you open your Bible. You can access other dimensions. Yes. You're coming to receive. I'm saying it again, some of you, you need to check people you're listening to. There's a lot of great empowered people by God. I, they are there. 
I'm not saying I'm the only one. I will never be the only one. After me, God will raise better and greater. That's not the point. The point is check who is you are listening to. Just because somebody is loud doesn't mean they are powerful. Come on. Just because somebody is quoting a lot of scripture doesn't mean they have anything. Come on. Where are the results? Amen. We don't want a form of godliness without the power of God. That means it's pretending, it's an act. Amen. If somebody is standing and saying a lot of godly things, but we don't, how come you preach about God so much? We believe it is there. What, what can you show us from God? Jesus showed us signs so that we can believe. He didn't just give us words. When they wanted to stone him, he said, of which signs? I have shown you from my father you uh, stoning me for. They had no words. So anyone who tells you, oh, you don't need miracles to validate somebody. It's a lie. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, a man approved by God with signs, miracles, and one. It shows God's approval. But they have deceived you so much. To believe Satan is the healer, Satan can deliver people. What kind of nonsense is that? God is telling you a, a kingdom divided amongst itself won't stand. You will see a man of God going online saying, Oh yeah, they are using false anointing. First of all, they don't even know what the anointing is. They think anointing is power. Oh, anointing means to be set apart. Yes. There is no demonic anointing. doesn't exist. But they will say, it's, you need to keep to the Bible. Where, show me where it says evil anointing. You can't pick what you want. And this is for you to be mature, to grow, to understand that, man, I want to be somewhere where I am seeing the manifestation of God because the manifestation of God through His Word, through the miracles God is performing, that is evidence Jesus is alive. The church is teaching you to fear signs and wonders. But how will you know Jesus is alive if He's not doing the same thing? Let me tell you something. To see signs and wonders doesn't always mean God is there. But where there is no sound, signs and wonders, God is definitely not there. Amen. I want you to think of that. We serve a supernatural God. If there's no anything supernatural, He is not there. God is not human. So if there's nothing supernatural, He's not there. We need to stop playing church. We need to stop playing church. Deliverance is not power. Deliverance is God's mercy. God showing that I feel sorry, let me liberate you. But there are dimensions of power. That you see deliverance, you're like, ah! We need to stop this nonsense. You cannot be a child of God and you are so demon-minded. Everything demon, everything demon. Every... That shows that you are under a spell. The Bible says a good man brings good things out of the... Where is the... Why are you always seeing demon? Why are you always thinking of demon? Why aren't you seeing God's protection, God's blessing, God's direction? Where is the... Good... Where are the positive things? Amen. The Bible says on everything that is of good report... Anything that is uplifting. Anything that is worthy of, of virtue. Put your mind on these things. You guys are only demon, demon, demon. What is wrong with people? That is a sign of bewitchment. That's bewitchment. Where you can't see God, you just see demons. The Bible says, where your heart will be, there will your treasures be. Everything you see is demon. Check where your spirit is. Somebody may have tied you under a river. It's true. When people say, oh, you know, I'm just asking God to stop me, stop me from seeing demons. Every encounter of the Bible of everyone that God ever opened their eyes, they see God. Yes. Yes. They don't see demons, witches flying around for what? Amen. What, how does that benefit? They, look in your scripture. They didn't start by seeing dem demons. That you need to check. That is why all these people who are calling everybody, that's a witch, that's a witch. Check what spirit is in you. What spirit is in you? Why are you only seeing witches? And you'll notice the only ones that are men of God is their friends. 
I think when you are cool with them, oh, you are a holy person. Anything happens, oh, they, they're yeah. spiritual babies. Yes, sir. They are going to heaven. They are men and women of God, loved by God. He died for them, paid a price, but they are still babies. Me, my concern is my assignment. Amen. What God has given me to do is what consumes me. Amen. I am saying this to you so that you grow, so that you have understanding, so that you comprehend that, hmm, where am I going? Look at how many testimonies we have. Do you think the devil is doing that? The devil is making people's tumors disappear when they're about to go for deadly surgeries. Right. That the doctor looks and says, ah, the word the prophet said has come to pass. Do you think Satan is doing that? Why are you guys giving Satan too much power? And to be honest with you, what I'm speaking by, I'm not if nobody has said anything about me of late. What I'm speaking is from the spirit. No, no, no hear me. What I'm speaking is actually not me speaking. Yeah. There's something in me that is speaking to you. Amen. If you have ears, you will hear what I'm saying to you. Amen. Ah, Father, let me come back to myself. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. Ephesians 6 and 12. Hallelujah. 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 Ephesians 6 and 12. Somebody shout fire. Fire. Let's read it together. One, two, three. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. One more time, one, two, three. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. One more time with everything that is in you, one, two, three. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. Cosmo Creto. Cosmo Creto. Shake your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. Cosmo Crato. Cosmo Crato. You may sit in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't even know if I have enough time because I have 30 minutes to preach. This is how many people remember the message about thrones? Amen. Yes. Lost thrones. This is part two. Amen. Hallelujah. Now hear me by the Spirit of God. In the Spirit, there is something called ranking. The spiritual world is not equalized. The spiritual world has hierarchy. There are operations that God put in place that are complete necessity in the operation of his creation. The order that even demons operate by, even that order is constituted by God himself. They understand authority. They understand power because this is the culture of God's creation. If you look in the animal kingdom, if you look at the insect kingdom, you will notice that even bees have a queen. They know there must be somebody that is leading. You look at lions, there's always a male lion that is leading the pride. This is the way God designed creation. Why? Because if there is no leader, there is no direction. Amen. I don't know if you can hear me. So the spiritual world operates in rankings and in dimensions. Now the mistake that many have, the reason why 
pastors, prophets, bishops argue and fight most of the time is because people are measuring ranking by crowds. People are measuring ranking by influence. Yet these two don't go together because God is the one who gives increase. Amen. God decides how many sheep you're going to look after. That is not a measurement of anyone's brilliance. It is evidence of what God has entrusted you with. Amen. It is a revelation of God's trust in you and the ability he has given you to shepherd his people. But it has nothing to do with rankings. The apostles had greater influence than Jesus. Because the Lord Jesus' influence was only in Israel. In his 33 years and a half of preaching, he only did it within Israel. But the disciples traveled far and wide. That did not make Jesus less. When Jesus said, greater signs shall you do, it did not mean they are greater in ranking. Power has been delegated to them to do more, but they are not the reason why they are more. These are operations of rankings. Apostle Paul, with all his great revelation, with all the great power he has been given by God, the insight and foresight, the Bible says he still went to present himself before the twelve. But especially Peter. Why? Because Peter was the rock the church is built on. Oh, amen. Meaning it doesn't matter we all walked with Jesus. It doesn't matter that John, you are beloved by Jesus. I am the one with a greater ranking because the church. Mm. Come on. The teacher. I don't think you're understanding. Because the church was built on Peter. He was the rock. You are the rock I'll build my church on. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. So the reason why the 12 were winning was because of Peter. I don't know if you're understanding. It was Peter that the gates of hell will not prevail against. So there was something that I would... And remember, Peter's already character was a defender. When everybody ran, he took out a knife, cut somebody's ear off for Jesus. He was crazy. But Jesus said, mm, if I'm going to empower anyone against hell... This is the guy that will lead the way. Everyone else will receive it, but Peter will lead them. Amen. Is this making sense so far? Yes. So people find when, 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 when Paul was bringing correction to Peter, telling him, Peter, don't be changing who you are. When you're with the Jews, you cannot change. You don't need to do that. It has taught people to disrespect authority. Paul never did it in disrespect. He did it in great honor. Read your Bible. The issue with today is that because you have a title prophet, some of you woke up and became prophets. Mm. The teacher. Some people were born prophets. You are not the same. It's not the same thing. So just because we are all called prophets, you have no spiritual capacity to look and say, mm, this one is a senior. This one is a senior. If I'm going to correct them, what they did is wrong. But how I will address them, I have to use wisdom because I don't want to offend God. You see, people think rudeness is boldness because they don't understand ranking. Oh, that's Man, good. That's good. A lot of people are rude. They think it to be boldness. Listen, our fathers before us, the Benny Hins, the, the, the Crefto Dollars, the Kenneth Copelands, the Kenneth Hagens. The T.D. Jakeses, the Bishop Noel, they made mistakes. It didn't change that they are fathers. Amen. Mm, that's good. You, you are on YouTube. You've never pastored a church. You don't even know what it means to pastor a church. You sit on YouTube and say, these people are this. You are a fool. Amen. You are a fool. Amen. Who told you that because somebody made a mistake, it changes who they are? That's it. That's it. Your president will make mistakes, but he's still your president. He didn't change nothing. But you see, the thing is, when you don't understand spiritual systems, spiritual systems, 
You will think you're on the right, yet you have offended God. And you'll notice the people who talk about other people, they never do well in life. They are very limited. God will resist you. Now listen to what the Bible is saying. It's saying, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, meaning a human being is not your issue. Your husband is not your, your issue. Your children are not your issue. That is not the problem. Our battle is always spiritual. Amen. So it's very important for you to understand spiritual things because if you are unaware of spiritual things, you are in trouble. Now when it comes to spiritual things, the Bible is showing you ranking, hierarchy. Principalities. There is powers. And then there's cosmocratos of darkness of this world. And then there is somebody higher than them called spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, the danger is this now. This guy, these guys called rulers, the word rulers there is actually cosmocrato. That word means princes. It means princes or a prince. Now, it is impossible for you to rule without a throne. Please, make sure you watch a message I taught a while ago called Lost Thrones. I don't know if it had the spirit of delete on it. I don't know if I left it up. It was a little extreme. But I want you to watch it because it's very insightful. It will make you go deeper into this message because you'll understand something. Now, spiritual wickedness in high places cannot do anything without rulers. Now, whenever somebody has been given a rulership position, that person has the ability to operate independently. Because it means they have been delegated a territory to control according to what they believe is fit for that territory. That is what a ruler is. An example, California has its own laws. Texas has its own laws. All these states are governed differently because of who is in charge. Whoever comes in also will create rules, some things that are, are, are completely foolish, won't benefit people, will benefit agendas, and others will come in that will do things that will actually benefit people. Why is it that everyone who comes in can push a different thing? Because the moment you are a ruler, you control culture. The word cult The word cult, within that word, we also derive the word culture. So rulers create a culture in order to have a cult. Good. 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 Teach you. Good. That's real good. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, if you are fighting evil and wicked spirits. You don't fight them simply because of your prayer. You need to understand in which heavenly places are you sitting? Because even you have been delegated a throne. Mm. Come, on. Mm. Come, on. Come on. Come on. So in which realm are you sitting? Amen. If you are in the realm of principalities, you cannot fight yeah. A cosmocrato. Amen. He's higher than you. He is ruling. You are not. Mm -hmm. Come on. You're helping, prophet. Come on. You will not be able to deal with him. Why? Because he's holding a higher rank than you. You have no business dealing with it. The disciples of Jesus brought, brought a young man possessed with devils. They said, Lord, we've prayed for this guy. We can't cast this demon out. 
Every other demon, remember when they went two by two, they came back, they said, Lord, you won't believe. Even demons were subject unto us. Jesus looked and said, hey, I saw Satan fall from heaven. You are saying my rank is higher than all of you. You are doing this because of me. He said, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is not the book of life. This is the book of princes. So now, now, now watch this. Watch this. The same guys who are excited about casting out demons. A young boy comes to them. They can't do nothing. The father says, take me to Jesus. They come to Jesus. They say, yeah, Jesus, your guys have prayed for him. They can't do anything. The man even lost faith. Lost faith. Jesus says, do you believe? He said, I, I said, help my unbelief. Jesus looks at the spirits and he tells them, leave the boy. They left the boy. Yes. Why was it so easy? Because Jesus was holding a rank that they cannot negotiate with. Mm, that's good. Amen. After this evening. Yes. Sit down for two seconds. Sit down for two seconds. I have 17 minutes. Mm. Daniel 10, 11. Daniel 10, 11. Daniel 10, 11. Listen to this. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. Understand the words that I speak unto thee. And stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken these words unto me, I stood trembling. Daniel is praying 21 days fasting and praying. Gabriel comes and says, Daniel... God loves you. You are so esteemed by God. You are so loved by God. But the love of God didn't stop you from fasting 21 days. An old man. Daniel wasn't young. He was old here. God says, I love you. But you have been delayed. Yet from the day you prayed, Gabriel tells him, let's go, 12. Look at this. Then he said unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. Notice, God is hearing him by his decision to fast. God is sending an answer. Daniel, you don't need to fast. I love you. I have already decided to answer you. Amen. Now watch this. And I, came, and I am come for thy words. I have come because I've been given a message to give you. Verse 14. Hey, hey. Keep going, keep going, please. Time, I don't have time. Now I am come to make thee understand that what shall befall, what, what befall thy people in the later days. For yet the vision is for many days. So he's telling him, okay, this is what is about to happen. Verse 15. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face towards the ground and I became dumb. And if you keep reading, Daniel now is, tells, is told by Gabriel, listen, Gabriel, I came down. But when I came, the cosmocrator of Babylon stopped me. And I stood there for 21 days. And I could not come through. God loves you, but your ranking is low. Come on. So good. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes. Go back to 13. I want to show you something. Go back to 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 
one and twenty days. But lo, one of the chief princes, a greater cosmocrator had to come. Come on. Ah. Because the spirit that was in Babylon was also a ruler. But he was a ruler of darkness. Gabriel come is a ruler of light. Yeah. But the ranking are equal. So Daniel had to fight for, uh, Gabriel had to fight for 21 days mm. to make it through, to break the barrier to go to Daniel. Mm. But for him to stop the prince of the power of the air, he needed a superior. Come on, you're teaching it. Good. He needed a higher cosmocrator to come from heaven yes. and say, You, from today, you are fired from this region. I prophesy to you. Prophesy. May you be connected to a higher office. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sit, sit for two seconds. Sit, sit, sit. So notice, what won the battle wasn't prayer, was ranking. Gabriel felt sorry for Daniel because he has been given a mission to deliver a word. Notice, Gabriel tells Daniel, I came because of your words, but I was resisted. Because I was resisted, a greater prince had to come and help me. Notice, God didn't send Michael. Gabriel called Michael. Wow. You're teaching. Come on. You know what? This message is not for today. Let's finish. Good. Good. So what makes demons compel other demons is what are they? If they are a ruler, they cannot be controlled. Rulers actually work together with Satan. Because they have been lifted to a place where they can control certain places. Because Satan himself also has a throne. Did you know that? It's actually on earth. It's actually here on earth. Let's go to the book of Revelations quick. Hmm. Revelations chapter 2, verse 12. And to the angel of the church of Pagamos. Anyone knows where Pagamos is? Pagamos is Turkey. Pagamos is more than day what? Turkey. And to the angel of the church of Pagamos write, This thing say he which had sharp swords, with two edges. Verse 13. I know thy works. And where thou dwellest. Even where Satan sits. Huh? Listen. Where he sits. Where his seat is. His throne is in Turkey. Mm. Hey, it's too good. Shh. And thou holds fast my name, and hast denied my faith, even in those days where, where in Antipas was faithful ma- ma- matter, who was slain among you, where Satan dwells. Notice, he didn't just say where he sweet sits, but where he dwells. Satan has an earthly address. Satan has an earthly address. He sits in Turkey. He controls the world from Turkey because when you're in Turkey, you are connecting Asia, Europe. It's a very strategic point. Let me show you something. Let me finish. I have too many verses today. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, 17. Thine heart was lifted up. This is talking about Satan. Because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom wisdom by, by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. 
So people who can see Satan are also people who hold a throne. Mm. Ah. That's good. Good, prophet. That's good. Because in order for you to be a king, you have to be a ruler. And for you to rule, you need a throne. So there are people who can deal with Satan and there are people who can't. Now the question is this. How do I transition? Because the Bible says we are seated in heavenly places. Ah, but where am I? Because it's speaking in general terms. So how can I shift myself? Mm. Prophets. Not growing prophets. They are prophets who occupy a throne. They have the power to uproot a king, put a king, destroy a nation. So when people say, oh, you know, a prophet comes to uproot and this notice, they just complain. They have no spiritual power to do it. There are so many on YouTube, Facebook, they talk a lot. But you never see any manifestation of power because they have no throne. Elijah had a throne. He said, for three years there will be no rain until I say so. Huh? Notice, he's controlling a territory. It doesn't matter what God thinks. He has been given permission to call whatever it takes for you to represent and to carry out what I want to do it. Elijah made the whole country be in a drought until he decided to pray. That is called ruling. I am not doing your voting and your elections, but I will control your nation by what I will do. I will bring drought. You guys will understand who is with you. He twisted their hand. Why? He occupied a throne. A prophet can speak by the spirit of God. And a prophet can also speak by his spirit. The Bible says no word of Samuel ever fell to the ground. It did not say the word of God to Samuel. Meaning if Samuel says you are dying, you are dying. Right. Even God cannot veto it. Because he's a ruler. Yeah. That to the point that when God sent him to Jesse's house to anoint. He was about to anoint the wrong person. God had to stop him immediately. God didn't just cancel it spiritually. God said, don't do it. Don't you know that man sees the outward person, but God looks at the heart. This is a prophet called a seer. He is not using spiritual eyes to look. How can a seer, Samuel is called the seer. He's going somewhere instead of using eyes to see. Spiritual eyes to see. He's using carnal eyes. He looked at him. He said, mm, he is handsome. He is tall. Ah, surely he's the anointed one of God. He's judging the anointing of God by how somebody appeared outside. And it worked for a long time. But this time God told him, my guy, no. Don't anoint him. I have refused him. He's not the one. There's another guy sitting outside. If he had put that oil on him, God cannot reverse it. Come on. This is why God could not tell Isaac who to anoint, who to bless. Because he was a ruler of a nation. Wow. Come on. Even though God loves Jacob, God cannot make Isaac anoint Jacob. Jacob has to be intelligent enough to work his way. So that by the time the hand is laid on him and he speaks, no one can change it. Amen. God is about to give you power. I receive. That what you shall speak over your family, yes, I it shall never be undone. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Now, 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 watch this. We are getting somewhere. 
Are you still here? Yes. This is why, this is why you will notice something. Whenever I am dealing with spirits, I identify myself. Say, you know who I am. I am a prince. Ah, demons that they can't resist anymore. The reason why they have to listen to me is because I have a throne. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let me be honest with you. Let me be honest with you. If I had no throne, what these people tried to do to destroy me, the church would have been done. But the reason why it doesn't affect anything is because I occupy a place of power. That even though you speak, you cut video. Even if I was indeed wrong, you can't do nothing about it. Amen. Whom God has approved, yes. no one can write off. Yes. You can't do anything about it. You can't. Even if they are wrong, Solomon has messed up, brought idols into Israel. God comes and says, uh, Solomon, you've messed up. I would have killed you. But because of your father, why because of your father? Because God told him, your throne will remain before me. So he cannot cut off his seed. He can't do that. He said, because of your father, I will spare you. You will live all your years after you are dead. I will destroy your nation. I will scatter it. So God's anger still has to be displayed. But he won't do it to the one who is okay. <laughs> God is different. Are you understanding what is happening there? So, so now watch this. Watch this. We are going somewhere. I'm about to finish. I have one minute. Because I could keep going with this, but because of time. I said because of time. Because of time. So, so understand this. When we prophesy to you, you are sitting here because you know there are results. If this man speaks, God follows through. Amen. Amen. There is something that is in that place. Amen. That when people look and say, why does he look like this? What does it? To you, it doesn't matter because you, you don't see what they see. You're seeing something else that God has given unto you. Matthew 25, 14. I'll finish with this. Matthew 25 and 14. It's about to get a little extra sweet. Amen. Amen. Now listen to this. For the kingdom of heaven is, a man, is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. And straight away he took his journey. God has given you something according to your ability. Your ability doesn't change. What he gives you doesn't change. Because to him he's giving you the best. But that best is limited by your ability. It is you, not God. Now watch this. Then that he had received five talents, went and traded with, with the same and made them another five talents. Likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and dug into the earth and, his, and hid his Lord's money. He saved the Lord's money, kept it. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh, and he reckoneth with them. He comes back and says, okay, my guys, where's my cash? And so he had received five talents, came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Verse 21. Ah. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good 
and a faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you cosmocrato over many things. He's not making him ruler of goods anymore. He's making him ruler of... Amen. You're not getting it. He's making him a prince. Yeah. Said, you are faithful looking after this thing I gave you. Good job. Because you have done this, I'm promoting you. I will make you a cosmocrator. I will make you a prince over many things. You will no longer have to deal with goods. You will deal with territories now. Wow, amen. amen. That's good. 22. Watch this. He also, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Notice the congratulation is exactly the same. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee cosmocrator over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Notice, when you become a prince, you experience joy. Amen. Amen. Now, the one that gained five more, and the one that gained two more, they both are becoming rulers, but they will not be the same kind of ruler. The one who gained five more will be above this guy who gained two. Even though he will rule, his territory will not be the same. Because his ability cannot control that territory, so he will be limited. Some of you have not even ruled over your own house. Come on. You have not even ruled over yourself. Amen. How will you change your family if it has not begun with yourself? Amen. Uh, if you're not Amen. clapping, you're the one I'm talking to. If you... <laughs> Think about it. You yourself, the divine encounter is not there. How will you give others? Yeah. How will that be possible? How will that happen? You'll be limited. Yeah. Not because God doesn't love you. It's not God's fault. It is you. Look at this. 24. Then he, then he which had received... The one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown. That is not God's reputation. And gathering where thou hast not what? Strawed. That's not God at all. Wrong image. Mm. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent into the earth. Lo, thou hast thine. He gave God, okay, here's your thing that you gave me. Maintaining what God gave you is a mistake. You can miss heaven because you never grew. Amen. That's good. The wickedness here that God cast him into hell had nothing to do with sin. The greatest sin is God giving you something and not going after it. Amen. You have sinned because what he has given you has power to save millions upon millions upon millions. Amen. But he gave you something and you hid it and many perished because of you. Come on. He won't spare you. It's an evil in the sight of God. Verse 27. Thou oughtest therefore to have put... Oh, let's start from 26, sorry. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked. Ah, the guy kept what God gave him. He said, you are wicked. <laughs> thou wicked and slothful servant. Lazy. Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strode. This is your concept of me. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. 
And then at my coming, I should have received my own with, with usury, meaning with profit. 28. Therefore, the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. Notice there was another guy. The two were promoted. The one who had five gained five more. He said, congratulations. Go into this thing. The one who had two. Congratulations, you've gained two more. Yes. And then there was another guy who had ten. He was not even mentioned because he's not in their league. Wow. Come on. Wow. Ah. Wow. It's in your scripture. God said uh, to the one that has nothing. Notice, God doesn't give to those who don't have. God doesn't give to those who have less. God gives to those who have more because he knows they will multiply it. Amen. So you refusing to grow is not an advantage to you because if God has something to give somebody, he won't come to you. He will go to whoever has... Come on. Come on. So you think about it. God didn't say, okay, the one that had now gotten two more, let me give him one more so that he can be three. Because remember what they gained is a profit. It's not theirs. Do you understand? So you should have said, okay, the one that had two, let me give him one so that now he has three. He's closer to the one that had five. God said, give it to the one that has ten. The question is this. What is your faithfulness? It determines if your dimension changes or not. Think about it like this. Have you ever noticed something very funny about Moses and very strange? God comes down in the book of Numbers and he corrects Aaron and Miriam. Said, hey, if there is a prophet among you, I'll speak to them in visions and in dreams. I'll make myself known. I'll speak to them in dark speeches. But not so with my servant Moses. He is a faithful in all my house. God is saying, if I look on earth, no one like Moses. He is faithful than anyone in my house. To him I speak face to face. Are you not afraid? Do you realize the Bible says Moses and the prophets? He doesn't even call Moses a prophet. He transcended, he occupied a throne. That he could sit down and reason with God. Do you know God doesn't need any reasoning? But because now you have become a ruler, you can operate independent of God. When God is about to do something, he says, God will do nothing unless he reveals it to his servant, what? The prophet. Why is he, receiving it? Why is he revealing it to his prophets? Because you have to sit down and discuss. Okay, what do you think of this? Moses says, ah, God, you're going to destroy them. What will that make you look like? They're going to say you're evil. Repent. Ah. <laughs> Moses told God to repent. And many of you think repent means you have sinned. Repentance means change your mind. He said, God, change your mind concerning this evil. It's written in your Bible. And the Bible says, and God repented. He told him, go and tell those people to stop doing what they're doing. But when Moses went, God said, I will kill them all in the wilderness. 40 years. I will do it systematically. At one point, God looked at Moses and said, Moses, please move out of the way so I can destroy them. God is asking Moses permission. Moses, move out of the way so I can destroy them. I promise I will make a new covenant with you. God Almighty, looking at a human being, flesh and blood, and saying, please move out of the way so I can destroy these people. Do you remember when we were kids and we'd get into fights? You hold me, man. Hold, hold me back. He's telling Moses, stop holding me. I want to destroy these people. But because Moses had become a ruler, that is why when you even look at the law, there is the law of God to the children of Israel. And then there is the law of Moses. Moses was qualified to give them rules. You do this, get stoned to death. Jesus comes and says, ah, you, if you have not seen stone. Ah. <laughs> Moses has a rule. 
that God doesn't approve. But God lets it ride until his time to rule. He says, I'm changing this law. I have come to fulfill the law and the prophets. Amen. So he came to change. Okay. In some places, these guys got carried away. This is not a reflection of me. <laughs> I don't want you to be stoned. I'm a God of mercy. So because I'm a God of mercy, he who has no sin, cast the first stone. I'm not saying don't stone. But if you have never messed up, then don't stone. Ah. So Jesus is coming to fulfill the law and the prophets. Why? Yeah. Because some rulers made some rules that are crazy. Yeah. Don't eat any unclean animal. Jesus comes and says, uh, it's not what you eat that makes you sin. But it's what comes out of you. Yeah. Man, I wish I knew this in the wilderness. <laughs> if I had this revelation, I would have lived so well. Notice for years, people are not eating certain things. Jesus comes and says, uh, uh, it's not what you eat. It's what comes out of you. So God, why did you make it seem like it was you? Because a ruler gave you a rule. He can't override it. Wow. So good. Peter is fasting and praying. He falls into a trance. God brings down... down uh, 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 a thing that has unclean animals. He tells him, kill and eat. <laughs> Peter looks and says, how can I eat what is unclean? I will never touch it. God says, hey, my guy, don't call what I have made clean unclean. God, when did you decide it's clean? When did you decide it's clean? Because notice, Jesus came and said, it's not what you eat, it's what comes out of you. But Peter is a concrete Jew. He's still doing what Moses said. And God has to tell him, my guy, don't call what I've made clean, unclean. For a long time, the Jews struggled with the idea that the Gentiles are grafted into the house of Israel. Struggle with it. Why? Because some guys came and said, ah, salvation is of the Jews. It shows you the extent of what a ruler can do. Believe God and you'll be established. Believe his prophet, you prosper. Ah? Why? Because he can change some rules. Not to change God's word. No one can change God's word. But to benefit people. A child dies. Elisha takes the baby, says, uh, give me the child, goes upstairs, says, God, how can you kill this child when I'm here? It didn't matter that God had numbered the child's days that he should die, not a, a grown-up, die as a child. A ruler is complaining. Lord, do you really think it's a good idea for you to take this child when I'm here? Give this boy back his spirit. He lays down on the boy. The boy comes back to life. He goes down and says, here is your child. Will you be faithful to God? If you will be faithful to God, there will be a transformation. There will be a change. You begin to notice that what you say, what you do cannot be vetoed anymore. Amen. Things will begin to shift. Today, as you're in this service, Amen. by the power God has given me by His Son, Jesus. Amen. By what the Holy Spirit has given me, I prophesy to you. Prophesy. That every prince of darkness that has been maintaining patterns and maintaining issues in your life, that you have been praying for change and change is not coming, today that spirit will be pulled down. Amen. Amen. Because anything that is of flesh and blood is not your enemy. It means there is something else operating in the background. 
And if you have prayed and you have fasted, it has not changed. Understand that there may be a throne in your family that needs to be pulled down. Amen. The question is, will you be faithful unto God? Amen. Will you be faithful unto God? If you will be faithful unto God, if you will be faithful in your prayer, if you will be faithful in your pursuit of Him, in your love for Him, in your intercession for your children, your family, and your community, your nation, God will say, this one is faithful, understands the assignment. I will begin to promote him. I will begin to promote her. That what they do will bring a change that is tangible into my kingdom. That is why the Bible says we shall rule with Christ. You are not seated in heavenly places as a decoration. God sat you so that you can carry out certain things for his kingdom. But many of us that are here, the truth is many are not seated. There are many that are not seated. There's a lot of people that are praying, but they have not seated yet. They have not sat in heavenly places with Jesus. That is why your prayer seems to be weak. Yet you're fasting, you're doing everything, but you're not increasing. It is not, you are not seated yet. You have not come to the understanding that Jesus died and we died with him. When he resurrected, we did not resurrect. He is the one who resurrected and we live and move and find our being within him. So when he was taken to the high heavens, we also went. But if your wisdom has been corrupted by Satan, you begin to believe what Satan says. You are nothing. Yes, I am nothing. You will never be anything. Mm -hmm, I'll never be anything. You will never succeed. Yeah, everybody else will succeed except me. Your whole picture of who you are will be distorted. God is calling you to be shifted. Amen. God is calling you to a higher place. Amen. I want you to lift your hands to heaven and plead with God for the spirit of faithfulness. Ask God to make you faithful. To make you a good steward of whatever he has given you. Your family, your career, your talent, your gift, whatever. God to give you the spirit of faithfulness. Faithfulness to your family. Faithfulness to your children. Faithfulness to the assignment he has given you. Faithfulness to prayer. The spirit of faithfulness. Lift your voice and begin to cry to God. Father, lift your voice, lift your voice. Faithfulness. Give me the spirit of faithfulness, Lord. That I may be faithful to my family. Faithful to my family. That I may be faithful to the things that you've given me, Lord. To you. That I may be a faithful to story, be faithful God. To my ministry. Give me the spirit of to faithfulness, be faithful Lord. To the faithful in the prayer, God. To be faithful to my career. To be faithful to the call that you have placed on my life. To be faithful in prayer. prayer. Give me the spirit of faithfulness. Give me the spirit of faithfulness. Give me the spirit of faithfulness. Give me the spirit Say to Lima, no, Rita, the Bazanda Kaye, Ruti Limaziki, Lema Gore Baba Bazanda Lima, Rope Faithfulness God. I can hear you praying. Ask God to give you the spirit of faithfulness. The spirit of faithfulness. Man, Sidi Mandorina, the Mazanda Lima, the Sidi Vinicidos. 
Rima kune le mana rita na kore basi libando. Give me the spirit of faithfulness. Lipa no runa. Faithful to my master. Faithful. Let's burn them, burn them, burn them. Give me the spirit of faithfulness, God. Faithfulness to my marriage. Faithfulness to my business. Faithfulness. Faithfulness over my prayers. Faithfulness in my business. Faithfulness in the word that you've given me. Give me the spirit of faithfulness. Ringo de lima da ya. Seli coste le pari sova. I procure ma ne vagila ma suya. Vegusta la mari ma dosia. Deli mari la santo. Mano le mano le mari ma nasto. Zanduli ma na bage. Vegus ma aneli kila mari peloste. The spirit of faithfulness. Vazula ma roste. Vetali kodi. Langa na mazay. Speak to the Lord, speak to the Lord. Give me the spirit of faithfulness. Give me the spirit of faithfulness, O Lord. Spirit of faithfulness, God. Andurina mazule miro ara mazule barusele mazuka landa mazere mazana maza doni se malarusele mazano vene andurina mazere na mazule mazele sikos de kos de mara mazere mazane spirit of faithfulness spirit of faithfulness. Lift your voice, speak to the Lord. Lift your voice, Maruti li makarus to the mami de kine mina kladasi. Give me the spirit of faithfulness, Lord. Give me the spirit of faithfulness, Lord. Faithful to the work. Lipa kore mana mase. Zite maguna. Faithful. Epa na magele masu. Zima na magele. Rupas, <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus.
Right now, I condemn every ruler. Right now, I condemn every ruler. Every ruler of darkness. Every ruler of darkness. May their powers be broken. May their powers be broken. Over my family and over my life. Over my family and over my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. May they power be broken. Over my family and over my life. May Jesus name lift your hands to the Lord Jesus some of you that are listening you need to go and find your parents and ask them to for forgiveness please some things you're fighting are not demons it's God resisting you don't be resisted by God Amen. you can't pray out of it you can't fight out of it it's a chokehold you can't escape if God resists you, who can save you from it? You can't bind God. You are better off being cursed by a witch than to be cursed by God. Ah, you can't tap out. He will finish you. Mm-hmm. 
This Sunday will be dominion service. Yes! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It will be one of the most important services of this year. Amen. It will be a debt cancellation service. Amen. Whether it is spiritual debt, physical debt. Amen. I want you to bring your most stubborn bills. Listen to the prophetic instruction. Your most stubborn bills. Yes. That you have had a difficult time paying. Bring them in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray. If that debt doesn't disappear, Amen. Amen. God will give you more than enough to pay it off. Amen. I receive. There's only two ways it's going to work out. Either it will disappear. Oh, God will give you more than enough to take care of it. I receive. Amen. That is the only way it's going to work. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So get early. We have the tent out and everything, but it fills up quick. So make sure you are here early and occupy your space quickly. Allow them to sit you and put you where you need to be so that we can, uh, um, we can be blessed by God. And that our lives may be changed. Amen. Whatever has been a delay, that date will be accelerated. Amen. Jesus. Listen, children of God. People have real burdens. Amen. People need real answers. Yeah. We can't play church. We can't play politics. We can't play those games. People are dying. Yeah. And they need Jesus to give them life. Lift your sacrifice to the Lord. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I honor you with my giving. I honor you with my giving. Glorify yourself even now. Glorify yourself even now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout and look to the directions of the ushers as you come to give and dance and in celebration. Hallelujah. Oh
a powerful time in the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Go from this place knowing that you are blessed. We love you. And we'll see you on Sunday. Please let people know to be here on time. It is our powerful dominion service. God richly bless you. Amen. Together for purpose means walking in the complete love and purpose of God. Our marriage is selfless. It's not only for us, but it's also for others to benefit from our fruit. Power that cannot serve becomes corruption because it seeks out itself. It satisfies itself. It is not yielded to serve. So a good leader is a servant first and foremost to God, and then secondly, to his family. You don't realize some of the things that you carry from what your parents have given you. You think you have it all together, but the spouse that's given to you will highlight them things and make you realize, oh, wait a minute, I should have left this with my parents. And I learned that pride was laying very, very deep within, and I didn't, I didn't recognize it. It made me sit back and like, man, I appreciate my wife so much. I remember going into prayer saying, God, I know that you created me to be a wife. I know that I'm a mother, but I need you to teach me so that when you put me back into a relationship, you can show me how I'm supposed to carry out a purpose and a vision.